Alright, in this video I would like to do an introduction to quadratic functions. So let's first define a quadratic function. Alright, so make note. Let A, B, C be real numbers with A not equal to zero. So a function of the form P of X equals AX squared plus BX plus C, where A, B, and C are real numbers and A is not zero. Any function of this form is called a quadratic function. Right, so it's got this X squared running around is really what it boils down to. Uh, and make note that the graph of every quadratic function is a parabola. If you do not know what a parabola is, well then let's let's do some graphing real quick. All right, let's sketch the graph of p of x equals x squared. All right, so let's do a little t chart. Okay, so we let x be zero. So plug zero in for x, you get zero squared, which is zero. So p of zero is also zero. Let x be 1, plug 1 in, you get 1 squared, which is 1. If you take negative 1 and substitute that in, you get negative 1 squared, which is also 1. 2 gives you 4. Negative 2 also gives you 4. If you take 3 and substitute in for x, you get 3 squared, which is 9. And if you take negative 3 and plug it in, you also get 9. All right, so plotting these points would give us this. And then when you connect the dots, we get this. So the graph of p of x equals x squared looks like this, and we call this a parabola. All right, so let's graph, I'm going to graph another one. So do a quick little t-chart again. All right, so again, if we let x be 0, we get uh, 0 squared, negative 0 is still 0. If you take 1 and plug it in, now be careful, that's going to be a negative 1. All right, so you take the 1, you plug it in for x, you get 1 squared, which is 1, and then the opposite of 1, which is a negative 1. So we're not squaring this negative sign out in front. We're squaring whatever number we plug in for x and then taking the opposite of that. So if x is negative 1, you take negative 1, plug it in for x, square that, that gives you a positive 1, and then the opposite of that would be a negative 1. With me? So if you take 2 and plug it in, you get 4, and then the opposite of 4 would be a negative 4. Same idea with negative 2. 3 and negative 3. All right, so this time all your y values are negative. So when you plot them, you get something like that and then connect the dots. All right, so now we have this parabola. We say that the parabola over here on the left, we say that opens up, and we say the parabola over here on the right, that it opens down. All right? Um, so those are our first two graphs of um, quadratic functions. So we can make some type of generalizations here, right? So the coefficient of the x squared here over on the left, it's a positive one, and the coefficient of x squared over here on the right is a negative one. And that really determines if the parabola is going to open up or down, right? So for parabolas that open up, that coefficient, that leading coefficient of the x squared there, that has to be positive. And for parabolas that open down, that coefficient of the x squared there has to be negative. We're going to summarize that all up into a note. So, if p of x equals ax squared plus bx plus c, then the graph of p of x is a parabola, which we already know. And if a, the coefficient of x squared, is greater than zero, which means it's a positive number, then the parabola opens up. So it looks like, looks like this. All right? And if a is less than zero, then it's a negative number, then the parabola opens down. So it would look like this. All right, so that's just looking at the, the coefficient of the x squared is going to tell us that information. We really haven't done anything, right? Um, so now I want to talk about the, the you got them opening up and down. Okay, I want to talk about this point and this point. Those points have a name. They're called the vertex, right? Vertex, so that... That low, for parabolas that open up, that lowest point there is called the vertex. And for parabolas that open down, that highest point is called the vertex. All right, it's an ordered pair. And we're going to say it's of the form h comma k. Right, just to denote a generic ordered pair. Right, so the vertex is a, is a point. Um, and we often use the, the h and the k to denote that point um, for the respective x and y coordinates uh, for that particular point. There's also another part that's important. So right down the middle, 
of our parabola here, there's like this imaginary line. And if you fold along that imaginary line, then the left side falls on top of the right side. Right, but see that if you fold along this imaginary line that I've dashed here, the left side falls on top of the right side. Okay, these lines are called the axis of symmetry. And the axis of symmetry uh, for parabolas that open up or down is always a vertical line, and the equation of a vertical line is always x equals some number, right? Well, if it has to run through the vertex, then it's x equals the x part of the vertex. So x equals h. So if you know the the vertex of your parabola, then you automatically know the axis of symmetry. It's x equals the the x part of the vertex. In this case, just h. Right? And the axis of symmetry can be used to help you help you uh, um, graph as well. If you know uh, if you know the vertex and you know a point, like say over here on the right, then you automatically know a point that has to be over here on the left. It just has to be the same distance from the axis of symmetry, um, and otherwise we wouldn't have a, a parabola that's symmetrical with respect to the line, right? All right. So once you know the vertex, you automatically know the axis of symmetry, right? So uh, let's talk about how to find the vertex. All right. Well, there's this thing called the vertex formula, All right? So uh, the vertex of the graph of a quadratic function of the form p of p of x equals a x squared plus b x plus c. So we you know we got our generic here, quadratic function, uh, is the point, and it's negative b over two a gives you the x part of the vertex. All right? Don't worry about the y part just yet. We'll talk about that in a minute. So from our quadratic function, we can determine the the a part being the coefficient of x squared and the b part being the coefficient of x, and we can plug it into this little negative b over 2a, which will give us the x part of the vertex. Then once we know that value, we need to be able to find the corresponding y value, and to do that, you just take that particular value for the, that you got for x there and plug it in for x and do the math on it, and it will spit back the y part of the vertex. And that's really what this notation over here on the right is saying. It's saying go to the original function p and evaluate p at negative b over 2a for x. So in other words, you take this value, this number you get here, and plug it into your function for x and let it tell you what the y value is going to be. Right? So that's the that's the formula. It looks kind of ugly, but it's not so bad. We'll do it. We'll do an example here in just a second. All right, so that's the that's the vertex formula. It did not just appear by magic. No, we're not going to go into the details here of how to derive the vertex formula. Um, feel free to ask your instructor that the the uh, those concepts might be. Uh, you might look at those concepts in a in a later class, like precalculus or something. Um, but right now, uh, we're just saying, all right, here's the vertex formula. How are we going to use it? Uh, and um, and that's that. But there's more to the story. So for those that are interested, seek that out. All right, so that's the vertex formula, and to tie it in with what we had a minute ago, this is really h comma k. All right, the h and k, where those are coming from, and why I'm using h and k, that'll come uh, a uh, probably in a later class. Uh, but uh, so right now we're just kind of viewing it as this is an ordered pair. It's got h comma k. So this h really is this negative b over two a part, and k is the well the y value you get back after you plug that into your value for x. So I'm going to kind of use that idea over here, and let's try uh, let's try an example. All right, so the given p of x equals two x squared minus twelve x plus seventeen, we want to find the vertex. So I'm going to say let's find h, which we know is to be negative b over 2a, and substitute those values in. So b is negative 12, so negative, negative 12 over 2 times a, and a is 2. So let's, how does that go? Then negative, and then negative 12 over 4 goes to negative 3, so this is 3. All right, so h is 3. Now we want to figure out the k. And k is just evaluate p at 3. All right, so we plug the 3 in everywhere, and then we just do the math on it. So we get 18 minus 36 plus 17, which goes to negative 1. So the vertex is 3, negative 1. As soon as we know the vertex, we automatically know what? the axis of symmetry. I'm going to abbreviate it and write it as A of S, right? Axis of symmetry, right? So 
looking at this particular quadratic function, we know that it's going to open which way? Right? So this one's going to open up. I'm just going to make a little note over here. Opens up. The vertex we just figured out was 3, negative 1. So the axis of symmetry is going to be x equals 3. And the axis of symmetry is always an equation of a line. So make sure you write the equation of a line. In this case, a vertical line. So it's x equals 3. For parabolas that open up or down, the axis of symmetry is always a vertical line. It's always x equals the x part of the vertex. All right, so there's the vertex and axis of symmetry. Now what about the y-intercept? How do you find the y-intercept? Uh, well, remember you let x equals 0 and then solve for y. So plug 0 in for x up here, and you find that p of 0 is 17. So the y-intercept is 0, 17. All right, so now what about the x-intercepts? How do you find the x-intercepts? Well, you let y be 0, right? Let the function value be 0 here. So 0 equals 2x squared minus 12x plus 17. All right, and you solve this equation. Well, what type of equation is it? Well, it's a quadratic equation. Uh, how do we solve quadratic equations? Well, you could try to factor if you want, or you can always jump it straight to the uh, quadratic formula, because that will solve every quadratic equation. So let's just do that. So we've got x equals um, negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. And then you just do the arithmetic on it, which then goes to which then goes to which then goes to So I've got two numbers here. We've got x equals 6 plus the square root of 2 over 2, which goes to about, when you do the approximation, 3.7071. That'd be an approximation, so you get a feel for where it's located on the x-axis. We also have x equals 6 minus the square root of 2 over 2, which goes to about 2.2. .2 nine two nine right so the the x-intercepts are these two points approximately because we had to do the approximation um, but that's how you find the the x-intercepts right so we need to be able to find x-intercepts y-intercepts that's from previous lessons and then the new thing being being able to find the vertex the axis of symmetry uh, and if the parabola opens up up or down and if you graph it, we get something like this. All right, so we can see that the vertex was 3, negative 1 down there. Uh, the y-intercept is 0, 17. Uh, and the x-intercepts, we had 3.71 roughly and 2.29 roughly on the other one there. And there's our graph of 2x squared minus 12x plus 17. And we found all the pieces that we needed. Uh, and they all make sense when we actually plot the graph. They all go through those points. All right, does that make sense? All right. Uh, well, that's it. So uh, the um, it's an introduction on quadratic functions. Uh, the graph is always a parabola. Uh, how to find the vertex using the vertex formula. Once in the vertex, you know the axis of symmetry, and then we should just always remember how to find the x-intercepts and y-intercepts of functions. All right. So that's it. Study well. Please let me know if you have any questions.